Argentina is on the brink of radical economic change following the election of libertarian Javier Millet. This self-branded anarcho-capitalist has vowed to scrap multiple government departments, do away with the central bank and the national currency. Markets have reacted favourably to his win, but the question now is can he live up to his promises to battle inflation and turn Argentina's fortunes around? On the streets of Buenos Aires, Javier Millet's supporters are in a jubilant mood. Thousands came together to celebrate the political newcomer's shock victory. They hope that bringing in the populist economist will help make things better. It's an incredible joy, it really is. It's the end of a never-ending decline, so to corrupt politicians we say, get lost. Economic policies have led us to this situation. Today, more than half of the population has voted for a different option, and I hope that things will change a lot. I belong to Javier's party, and I wish him all the best. I hope that things will change and that we won't have the economic instability that we have right now. It's a massive change for all Argentines. We've had enough corruption, enough insecurity, enough inflation, enough poverty. We were very tired. We wanted something new. We wanted to see new faces. Argentinians are suffering from non-stop economic crisis. Inflation has been rising for years and is now at 143% and it keeps on rising. Many people no longer know how to get by in their everyday lives and they feel abandoned by establishment politicians. For many, Millet is the only hope for improvement. Half of all Argentines are poor and 10% live in extreme poverty. Enough with the policies that caused this. Today we are once again embracing the model of freedom to become a world power. On the campaign trail, Millet promised to wage a massive battle against inflation. He plans to abolish the central bank, slash government spending and replace the national currency, the peso, with the US dollar. His economic plans scare many Argentines, but also his radical plans to shake up society. But a majority here are now apparently putting their hopes in a radical break with existing policies and putting their fate in the hands of the dazzling newcomer. Let's bring in Alicia Garcia Herrero, international economist at Natixis and a close follower of the Argentine economy. Alicia, thanks for being with us. Javier Millet is a rather difficult individual to pin down. He's a populist, he's a self styled anarcho-capitalist, but you have to say he's also an economist who studied his country's finances pretty carefully. Who or what has Argentina voted for? Argentina has clearly voted for a change from left-wing populism, lots of uh, government expenditure, creation of money, 200% inflation, to basically a liberal uh, neo-capitalist, as you said, a populist, but with a different face. This populist intends to cut massively government expenditure. It even wants to close the central bank because the central bank is the origin of the problem in as far as the central bank has been financing the government for since 20, 2003, since basically the Kirchner, um, the, the couple came to power and started to basically cre create money to finance uh, an economic model that was unsustainable. This is why we have so much inflation in Argentina today. So he wants to change all of that, but can he do it? Big question. It, very, it is very a big question. Because it's too late in the game. Absolutely, Alicia. And that plan to shut down the central bank, that's pretty radical, isn't it? And um, what would the impact of that move be? Well, you know, we can perhaps look at Ecuador. I think the best country to, to understand what might happen in Argentina is Ecuador. So Ecuador defaulted on its debt. It was actually an engineered restructuring, an engineer default and a restructuring uh, hand in hand with the IMF, which with the program, it so happens Argentina already has, has had 20 programs. So, so this would be one more out of the 40 billion that Argentina already owes is the largest uh, debtor for the IMF. But bear with me, imagine we have one more program in which Argentina decides to dollarize the economy. And thus, the central bank wouldn't be very useful, same as Ecuador, with the dollarized economy. What happens then is that Argentina can no longer create money. And, and in a way, I understand Millet's point of view. This is a solution because the central bank has been creating money, i.e. inflation, for too long. 
Now, the problem is Argentina owes so much money now. So it would have to big, you know, go through a big default, including with, with the IMF. And would Argentina find the money to do that? Argentina has received, as you probably know, money from even Qatar, SDR, an SDR swap line from Qatar to pay the IMF. An RMB swap line in two tranches already uh, withdrawn with the PBOC, with the People's Bank of China. But will countries still lend to, to Argentina to dollarize the economy? I think with this government, I will find it very difficult that Argentina does find those resources from China or from Qatar, for that matter, because it's a very different government. Yeah, I mean, Argentina was in good relations with the previous uh, populist government. So the question is, who is going to jump to help Argentina now? I want to talk more about foreign relations, particularly with China, as you mentioned, because Millet has indicated he is not interested in joining BRICS. What is behind that? Well, exactly that. I mean, Millet is the opposite of everything we have had before. Yeah, Millet knows that Argentina owes uh, RMB, but for that matter, eventually hard currency, because those RMB have been used to pay the IMF. Um, he knows that... Uh, China has a huge influence in Argentina now. He knows that, say he wanted to privatize, as he has already announced, uh, the biggest assets in Argentina, IPF, uh, the, the, the oil company. Uh, I'm sure that he feels that his hands are tied because Argentina owes so much to China already. And I think he wants to break away with that and be free to privatize to the, you know, the biggest, to the biggest, uh, bet uh, in, in town rather than just be dependent on China. So I think he wants to break away with what has happened for quite a few years already with the previous government. Alicia, you have watched this economy for many years. Am I right in detecting a, a tone of optimism in, in your take on Millet? Yes, I mean, I understand Millet is a character. You said it rightly. But, you know, I want to be slightly contrarian on the fact that had Massa won the elections, it would have been more of the same thing. We have to realize that, that Argentina was in a path of no return. Argentina's GDP has not grown in 15 years. They have 200 percent inflation. They owe more than any other country to the IMF. I mean, was that the right model? The country was being sold in pieces, pieces. You know, like, like, so yes, he's not perhaps the best candidate I could have imagined, but he's providing a change. And in order to clean up such a mess, you need a big, you need a disruptor. He is a disruptor. So for the lack of a better option, I would say maybe I'm optimistic. <laughs> More pragmatic. Alicia Garcia Herrera, thank you so much for being with us. And Argentina's economic fortunes were also on my mind when I interviewed World Bank President Ade Banga, who was here in Berlin this week. I asked him for his reaction to Millet's plans to scrap the central bank. Uh, you know, I understand what his concern is. And his concern is that Argentina, which is the second largest economy in Latin America, it's a member of the G20, let's not forget that. This country is struggling with hyperinflation, with a currency that has devalued itself many times over, in a situation where that inflation and devalued currency is making life very difficult for people and for businesses that cannot import produce, cannot import you know, raw materials. So kind of the economy is reaching a breaking point. It's not the first time this has happened. It happened some couple of decades ago as well. So if you're a leader of a country of that type, thinking that you can do more of the same and somehow find your way out of this is where he's struggling. And so his point of view is gradualism won't work. I need to make this a revolution, not an evolution. That's what he's struggling with. I believe that's a tough place to be. So what I'm going to try and do, along with the IMF and Kristalina is the one who has to lead here, is to connect with him and his team as they settle down and figure out how we can be most helpful to them in this process. And you can watch our full interview with Ajay Banga on the DW News YouTube channel. We covered a lot of ground from World Bank reforms to battling climate change and balancing risk. Well worth a watch.